Hi there. This is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss the steps involved in factoring a quadratic equation. So, as a brief reminder, a quadratic equation is one that looks like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where x is our variable, a, b, and c are constants. What we want to be able to do is to write this same formula in a different way. As two factors with just x plus or minus some quantity times x plus or minus some other quantity. And here we have an example quadratic equation, y equals x squared minus x minus 12. And we want to try to figure out the steps to write it in such a form. Well, first, it can be helpful to look when you're looking at this to determine if it's actually possible to factor it in such a way. Sometimes you'll be given a problem and told to assume that it is possible, but otherwise it won't always be so obvious. So one way of determining if a quadratic equation can be factored at all is to look at this, b squared minus 4ac. This must be greater than 0 in order for it to be factored in such a way, where these a, b, and c correspond to these a, b, and c. So let's plug those numbers in here and see what we get. We get b squared. Our b is negative 1, so negative 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times a is 1, and c is negative 12. It's important to keep track of your negative signs here. Okay, 4 times 1 is 4, times negative 12 is negative 48. 1 minus negative 48 is equal to 49, which is clearly greater than 0. Great, so we know that this can be factored. All right, but what are some tricks to determine more, more easily what this should look like, besides just guessing and checking? Well, let's say that we're going to write it in the form y plus c times, or rather, x plus c times x plus d. Actually, let's go ahead and call this e, so we don't get confused with the c over here. Though essentially, it's just any two arbitrary letters. Well, what we want to have happen is that e times d should equal c. Because when you multiply these out, you get x times x is x squared. And then e times d, in this case, is negative 12. What you also want to have happen is e plus d is equal to b. And you can see why this is the case if you, again, if you multiply this all the way out. So what we can do here is simply plug in the values that we know. We know that this is going to be negative 12. e plus d should equal negative 1. And the way that I usually go about doing this is simply try different combinations of e and d to get negative 12 and see which one of them will cause e plus d to be negative 1. So over here, start making a list. What are the different combinations of integers that can produce negative 12 when multiplied together? We can have 1, negative 12. And similarly, negative 1, 12. 2, negative 6, and negative 2, 6. And we have 3, negative 4, and negative 3, 4. OK. Well, since we have such a short list to work with, we can simply plug a few of them into here and see which one of them is, gives us the right answer. 1 plus negative 12, that's not it. Negative 1 plus 12 is 11, also not it. 2 minus 6 is negative 4, it's not what we want. 
negative 2 plus 6 is positive 4. It's not what we want. Here we're getting close. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Ta-da! We found it. And just to double, double check that there isn't any ambiguity, negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1, which is not what we want. So, we can simply plug those in. We get x plus 3 times x minus 4. And you can double check that these are the correct values by simply multiplying this out. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we've just discussed the steps to factoring a quadratic equation.